Greetings and uh, welcome to our Monday weekly educational rounds here at Seclair. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair. And today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. And on my left would be... I'm Lauren Arts and I'm a physician assistant student. And on my right? I'm David Zimkowski and I'm also a physician assistant student. So, buenos dias and uh, welcome to all our bilingual friends out in the audience. And uh, we're hoping that everyone joins us today, which may be proved to be an interesting topic and an interesting s series. Uh, by the way, my father was bilingual. Did you know that? No. Yes, he spoke two languages. <laughs> he, he spoke English and he spoke profanity very, very, very nicely. <laughs> and that's just a little how we keep things a little light today. But the, today what I'd like to uh, discuss is the integration uh, here at Seclair, our primary modality that we use is dialectical behavioral therapy. And what I'd like to begin a series on is how we incorporate uh, the principles and steps of 12-step recovery with dialectical behavioral therapy. Um, and as a disclaimer, I do not speak for any particular uh, fellowship in 12-step recovery. I don't claim to represent them. I don't claim to uh, present their views. However, I am in recovery from drug and alcohol addiction myself uh, since before yesterday, and I would like to incorporate, as we often incorporate, behavioral change. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that we often say to people is uh, it's very difficult to think your way into acting right. We act our way into behavioral change. Uh, I was talking to uh, Lauren and Dave earlier about a um, French philosopher by the name of uh, René Descartes. May, perhaps you may be familiar with his pronouncement that I think, therefore I am. And perhaps that may have set back uh, human development and human thought over, over five or six hundred years. Um, so what we're going to do to discuss today, I can specifically remember that when I would uh, attend my, I was attending my first 12-step meetings, and I would go in, and on the tables there'd be these placards, and they would say, think, 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 and I would look at those and say, that is how I got here. So how many, I would like to ask uh, folks out in the audience, how many of you have often tried to live your life on wishes and hopes? Tried to live your life on wishes and hopes, or we sat back and we waited for things to happen. Uh, Lauren, you've had a flat tire before you shared with me. Yes, yes, I have. <laughs> and after you the flat tire, did you get in? Did you get out and hitchhike and uh, go to a dealership or a car lot and buy a new car? No, no, I did not. <laughs> well, tell me why not. Because it's fixable. It's fixable. You can fix it. It's fixable. Have you? Has there ever been a time in your life where you where you felt that the tire is always going to be flat? That something in your life was always going to be the, be the way it was. Well, the first step in twelve step recovery, and I'm going to uh, paraphrase this is, is we admitted we were powerless over our addiction and our lives become unmanageable. And a lot of times the unmanageability in an individual's life is not uh, the broken relationships, the legal involvement, the financial ruin, the health concerns. It is, it is the unmanageability about losing who you are. Uh, I'm going to ask you out there, have you ever looked in the mirror? Perhaps that might even be today. Have you ever looked in the mirror and not not completely liked or understood or recognized what was staring back at you and not 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 the physical things the the person the pure inner spirit that is you the pure inner spirit look in a mirror very often day and tell me what you tell, tell me what you saw this morning other than the, the physical oh well, i saw someone who's ready to go for the day you saw someone who's ready to go lauren well, I'd say at first I saw somebody who was really tired. It felt like going back to sleep. <laughs> but maybe by like the second or third time of looking in the mirror, I looked a little more confident and ready to go and start my day with Dave. <laughs> and that's uh, that's really the unmanageability of addictions, the unmanageability of disorders is losing who we are. Uh, admitting we were powerless. And uh, Dave, you and I talked earlier about uh, Albert Einstein's definition of insanity. Could you... Tell us that. Well, according to Albert Einstein, his definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results every time. Sure, and quite often that's quite often that's what we do. However, in in addiction and quite often in in other areas of our life, 
uh, let's say when we have a drink in our hand, a drug in our hand, a slot machine handle in our hand, or we're going to seek out and ask a person a favor yet, yet once again, or we're going to put ourselves in a vulnerable position yet once again where things have never changed. Um, and that's where we know what's going to happen. We know what's going to happen when you have that drink, that drug, that slot machine handle, placing yourselves in, in vulnerable situations, uh, continuing to uh, be around negative individuals, people who, uh, who put you down. But we know what's going to happen, yet we, yet we do go and we do it anyway, Lauren. And that's, that is what's called addictive insanity, addictive insanity. So what, uh, what we, um, in dialectical behavioral therapy, one of our steps in mindfulness is radical acceptance. Radical acceptance. And what would radical acceptance mean to you? It would mean that I have to fully accept something and see it for what it is without wanting to necessarily change it right away, but just accept it what it is at that moment. Accepting that the tire's flat. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, accepting that the tire's flat. And also, Dave, that means accepting that the things that we continue to do will continue to get us the same results. Right. Right, yeah. right. So radical acceptance is not approval. Radical acceptance is not resignation. Radical acceptance is not believing this is the way it's always going to be or that you prove of a particular behavior or particular event, a particular situation. Um, so the idea is that in dialectical behavioral therapy, dialectical is uh, the definition of it is two seemingly opposites, okay? Like wet, dry, uh, night, day, uh, those two type of things. And the dialectical in dialectical behavioral therapy is acceptance and change. And sometimes we view acceptance as the way that things are always going to be. And then change, how, how can those two possibly to go to go together? However, in dialectical behavioral therapy, those are often two sides of the same coin. When we look at when we look at acceptance, we look at radical acceptance that this is the way that things are always going to be. Um, have you ever driven far in a flat tire, Lauren? Driven? No. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, perhaps there's this, perhaps you can relate to some of this out there. Is that I've seen people driving and they continue to drive even when they're down to the rims. They have not accepted the fact that their, their tire is flat. So until we accept that something exists, we don't approve of it, it's not resignation, there cannot be any positive change. Um, quite often, uh, Dave, Lauren, you've been in with uh, Dr. Chandra, you've been in with myself, other therapists, and part of what we do here is uh, people in dealing with people to assist them in uh, addiction issues. And perhaps sometimes you've seen people who perhaps may not have been committed, as committed as they could be to get involved in their recovery. And look at your own life out there. Uh, if you're trying to change whatever you want to change in your life for a partner, for an employer, for children, for parents, for brothers or sisters, uh, for general society, and you're strictly trying to do that for them, I can almost guarantee you that it is not going to happen. It's, it's, not, it's not going to happen until you can have that radical acceptance that you have an issue and that you desire some change that cannot take place. Well, uh, how does that happen? We can't interject people with a dose of uh, I want to, okay? Uh, and sometimes when people come and tell me they're desperate, Lauren, I'm, I'm a really happy guy. I really am. Because as desperation can often be the, one of the most powerful gifts you can ever have. You ever consider that, Dave? Um, no. Desperation can be a powerful gift. A oh. powerful gift. Desperation to change. Lauren, you've heard of the old saying, uh, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make him drink? Yes. However, Dave, you can make the horse thirsty. And that's part of our job is to, is to help an individual become thirsty and understand that there can be a different type of uh, perhaps a life worth living, a life worth living. So if you can ever consider making a, having a horse uh, thirsty, making a horse thirsty, how would you do that? Any thoughts? Um, 
not let him drink for a long time. There we go. <laughs> yeah, how about that? That 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 would certainly be something, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? That that would certainly give us something to think about. How about you, Dave? Any thoughts on how to uh, make a horse thirsty? Um, change where his water is, make him go different places for water. That'd be an idea. That'd be an idea. And that's, that's behavioral change, is it not? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the idea here is in dialectical behavioral therapy is number one is radical acceptance. And radical acceptance can work in so many areas in your life. Uh, when you're stuck in traffic, okay? Uh, when you look around, I'm sure everyone's been uh, stuck in traffic, uh, slow moving, a traffic accident, and look around. Look around at most of the. What are, what are the when you look around, what do most of the people look like? Uh, who are angry. Angry. <laughs> Have you seen that there? You know, and I've noticed that most of the people when I've looked at uh, examined faces in, in in traffic jams is that most people look like they're suffering from chronic constipation. Mm -hmm. They're 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 in, they're in desperate in desperate need. And often, Lauren, do, do, do people look around at each other when they're in traffic? Do they look at other human beings? No. <laughs> no, they do not. And what ha what happens when somebody sees you looking at them? What do they do? They look away. They, <laughs> in, indeed, oh. indeed. So so we're we're really used to losing that that human contact. So the second step that I'd like to talk about today is number two, and all these steps are in order for for a reason. Uh, what's the best place to start a journey? What's the place best place to start? At the beginning, but quite often we're people who want to start on chapter five of the book. Do we not? Or we want to turn to uh, the last page, or maybe read the cliff notes, or uh, and under, find out who did it, who did it, what the butler did it. That's a, a little older. So uh, the second step would be came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Uh, so what I'm asking you is there's three essentials to recovery, and we're all in recovery from something. Uh, their honesty, open-mindedness, and the willingness to try. And my hope is that you, if you have a small smattering or an interest in all or any of those three, uh, you're you're well on your way. You're well on your way. So restore us to sanity. Restore us to sanity. That's uh, and we did we did the one about uh, about Einstein. And so we we talk about the uh, we talk about the power greater than ourselves. And what we're talking here, we're not talking about religion. We're strictly talking about spirituality. And I'm going to relate to what what happens is is uh, when let's say. You go into uh, rehabs, okay? And I've done this myself. I've, uh, on many occasions, I've asked uh, people, well, tell me what you believe about this higher power nonsense. And I could not fill the tables, the chairs at this table, with the number of people who told me that they were true atheists, that they told me there was, it did not, they, there was nothing, absolutely nothing out there. And they believe that I would irritate them a little bit, Lauren. I, I would ask them, uh, well, tell me where that uh, belief got you. It got you staring at me, it got you in detoxes, it got you in hospitals, it got you in psychiatric uh, facilities. Uh, so you can believe in anything. I have a friend who believes in leprechauns, truly. And I'm not saying leprechauns does not exist. I have an open mind. However, I've never seen one. So, but tell me how, what kind of belief in leprechauns do for your life? So then we move, we move, move from belief to faith. And all faith is, is belief in something you don't understand. Belief in something you don't understand. Uh, I know that glowing bulbs in the ceilings make light. I don't know much about electricity. Do you, Lauren? No. no. All I know that it's dangerous. However, I completely understand that if I walk over to the light and flip the switch, what happens? Turns off. It turns off. So I have faith that the lights are going to go off simply because I flip a switch. And that's faith and belief in something we don't understand. So what we talk about in, uh, in spirituality is faith in action. And faith in action means that you it's the action and effort that you put in your life. We just can't think our way into attitude and behavioral change. We, it's difficult to think your way into wellness. So I will tell this uh, little story. There was a person who prayed to win the lottery every day. Do you play the lottery? Sometimes. Okay. How about you, Dave? <laughs> eh, every now and then. Do you ever win? No. Okay. <laughs> so so the idea is they prayed to win the lottery every day. Sweat blood. I mean, just prayed really hard for a very long time. So one day they got so angry that they went outside and they went up at the sky. They said, God, why won't you let me win the lottery? 
and this higher power called back down and says, could you meet me halfway and at least buy a ticket? So the idea to this story would be what? You need, you need the action if you want the result. You need the action. You, what would the chances of your winning the lottery be if you never bought a ticket? Zero. Zero. And what would the chances of any type of behavioral change, any type of attitude change in your life, uh, Dave, without the action and effort that the guy accompanies it? Zero. 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 So my suggestion to everyone uh, watching today would please, please take a time out for yourself. Please invest in yourself, some action and effort in your life. Sometimes it is so hard to, it's so hard to get moving. Uh, Newton Newton's first law of physics states that a body at rest tends to stay at rest. And believe me, I've been at rest many times. So the idea is perhaps some motivation. Even if you can get somebody to motivate you, that would be wonderful. In invest, in, invest in your own health and invest in your own wellness. Who's 100% responsible for your happiness, Lauren? I am. Right. And who's 100% responsible for your health, Dave? I am. Absolutely. And in uh, next week and in the weeks to follow, we'll be continuing on incorporating the 12 steps of recovery into dialectical behavioral therapy. And we certainly enjoy the, you, these talks that we do every week. And uh, any parting thoughts, Lauren? Nope, I think that's about it. Dave? Uh, well, if you've been thinking about doing something for a while, get out there and just take small steps and start doing it. Excellent. That's way you're going to achieve your goal. Excellent. And as usual, we'll leave you with a free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, perhaps unplug your television, uh, and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, try fishing without bait. Until next Monday, we thank you so much for joining us.